Hey everybody, Snoop Lax here, and today we're going to check out over 50 ROM hacks that work on actual console through EverDrives and other flashcards. Before we get started on this list, I want to explain two things really quick. First, what exactly is an EverDrive? An EverDrive is a Nintendo 64 cartridge which contains an SD card. Putting this SD card in your computer can let you put ROMs onto it, so you could literally put the entire Nintendo 64 library on your EverDrive, and over 99% of these games are going to run identically if you had the cartridge. For instance, if you have a cartridge of Super Mario 64, or if you have Super Mario 64 on your EverDrive, those two games will run identically, unlike when you use an emulator on your computer when there's going to be small subtle differences. Even for collectors that own every game, an EverDrive is great, because every time you put a game into a console and pull it out, you are slightly wrecking the connectors on the console and the game. So if you just keep an EverDrive in your console, you're protecting your games and your console. Next is what exactly is a ROM hack? Every Nintendo 64 cartridge contains a ROM. A ROM is pretty much the game data. With special tools, you can take your cartridges and transfer them onto your computer, or you can download ROMs online. These ROMs came from original Nintendo 64 cartridges. What a ROM hack is, is going into the game's code, usually using special tools, and changing things to make new stuff in the game. And a lot of times, this can lead to totally new experiences or almost sequel-like games. With that being explained, let's look at 50 amazing ROM hacks that can run on actual consoles. The first game we're going to be checking out is Super Smash Bros, and the first hack we're going to be looking into is Smash Remix. Smash Remix is an incredible ROM hack made by a huge community of people. There are over 40 custom stages in this hack made by a variety of people. I myself have made a couple stages. It has an incredibly cool expanded stage selection screen which actually has three pages that you can scroll through for all the new stages. Some of my favorite stages would have to be Momentos from the Persona series, the stage originated in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Great Bay from Majora's Mask, which originated from Super Smash Bros. Melee, and Fountain of Dreams, which also originated in Super Smash Bros. Melee. This hack contains five new characters, Ganondorf, Falco, Young Link, Dr. Mario, and Dark Samus, and a bunch of new cool options like combo meters, Hitbox toggles, random music, there's so much stuff in this hack, it's honestly unbelievable. The next hack we're going to be looking at is Break the Target Snoop Locks Challenge. This is a custom Break the Target stage that I've made, which works for every single character, and it's pretty much a challenge to see who can get the fastest time on this course. If you're looking for more Break the Target action in Super Smash Bros., this course is pretty fun to play, it is massive, and it's fun to see how low you can get your times. If for some reason over the 40 custom stages in Smash Remix wasn't enough for you, there are a ton more stages that you can find on the website Nintendo 64 Vault. The way these stages work though is each stage is its own individual hack, so it is kind of a pain to download them all, but if you are looking for even more stages, there are a bunch. I've made some like Temple or the Shrek stage, and there's also a bunch of others made by other creators. The next game we're going to be looking at is Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 hacking happened before EverDrives and flashcards were even released or were really even that popular. So the tools that were initially released to make these hacks were not compatible with EverDrives or flashcards, just emulators. Because of this, a majority of Super Mario 64 ROM hacks that are out are not compatible with EverDrives or flashcards. In 2014, it was discovered how to make these ROM hacks console compatible. It takes a lot of extra work, but in recent years, more and more console compatible hacks have been getting released. But still to this day, a majority of the ROM hacks that come out aren't console compatible. But saying that, here are some great console compatible ROM hacks that are out there. Super Mario 64 Split Screen by Case. This is an extraordinary hack that adds two player multiplayer into the game using split screen with Mario and Luigi. It makes it so you can collect two stars at a time, there's a new bubble feature, it's a great way to experience Super Mario 64 with a friend. I did a live stream of this game where I played through the entire game with a good friend, and it was honestly such a great time. Highly recommend this one. The next one is Super Mario 64 Star Road by Skellix. 
This game was originally released in 2011. In 2019, Kay's updated the entire game to be console compatible. This was one of the first major Super Mario 64 hacks, so the fact that it's finally console compatible is pretty cool, because it is a very long, fun game. Highly recommend this one. The next game is Super Mario 74. Super Mario 74 was initially released back in 2011 by Lugmalord, but in recent years, hackers like Mac N64 have made Super Mario 74 console compatible. This one does not have the same leg reduction that uh, Star Road has. If you were to pick one or the other, I definitely recommend Star Road more because it has much more leg reduction than 74, but if you've beat Star Road already and you prefer playing 74, 74 on console runs really well, it just gets pretty laggy at some areas. The next hack is Speed Star Adventure by Jesus Yoshi 54 This hack looks astonishing. It has some options like frame skipping, it has a very good aesthetic and a very cool unique look. Out of all the Super Mario 64 ROM hacks that are console compatible, this one might have the most custom coding in it. This hack came out a couple months ago, but it just became console compatible, which is very cool. Another great console compatible Super Mario 64 ROM hack is Detective Luigi by Rover. It's a detective mystery with great dialogue, it even contains a mini-map and some really cool custom boss fights. I highly recommend this one. It would probably take the average person around 2 hours to beat. A guy named Aloex Auto also has 3 excellent hacks. The first one is Bounce Tales 64. This hack was based on the game Bounce Tales, and it doesn't even look like a Super Mario 64 ROM hack. It is a lot of fun to play, and I'd highly recommend this one. His next ROM hack is Isabel 64. This hack lets you play through the game as Isabel instead of Mario. Isabel has a bunch of custom moves, and you can even use L and the D-pad to switch your outfit. And the last hack made by Owl is Franco Sanchez 64. This is an incredibly mini hack, like this would probably take the average person less than half an hour to beat and you play as Isabel, going around a level that's similar to Bob on Battlefield, and it's just a nice cute little hack. Pass to Power also has three hacks. His three hacks are Fox in Super Mario 64, Falco in Super Mario 64, and Captain Falcon in Super Mario 64. Falco and Fox play identically, having a custom shine, faster movement, and a very cool increased triple jump. But Captain Falcon also has a unique moveset too. So it's just a fun new way to play through Super Mario 64 as these custom characters. The next hack is Waluigi's Taco Stand by Case. This is a very short, sweet hack. You play as Waluigi where you gotta find taco ingredients. It's pretty fun and it's really unique. The next one is Super Mario 64 Randomizer by R. Thirtily. This is very cool because every time you play this hack you get a completely different experience. It pretty much just takes all the assets of every level and puts them in random places. So every time you play through, you get a completely different experience. This is a lot of fun to speedrun, and you can play this game dozens of times and it wouldn't get old. And the last but not least Super Mario 64 ROM is the Yusamune Project ROM. This ROM hack is a ROM hack made for speedrunning Super Mario 64. It could also be used by casual players too. This ROM hack includes save states, easy ways to reset, and a lot of other very, very cool features. If you like speedrunning Super Mario 64, I cannot recommend this ROM enough. The next game we're gonna be looking at is Banjo-Kazooie. And first, we're gonna look at one of my favorite Banjo-Kazooie mod creators, Mark Kirkle's mods. Mark Kirkle has created a ton of amazing mods that I've covered on my channel, some of which include Banjo-Kazooie Bob Bomb New Field. This is Bob Bomb Battlefield in Banjo-Kazooie, but he redid all the textures made it a really good, well thought out level, and it's an incredibly fun ROM hack to play. The next one is Banjo-Kazooie in Donkey Kong Country. This puts Banjo-Kazooie in the world of Donkey Kong Country, and you're pretty much playing Banjo-Kazooie in 2D, which is a very cool experience. The next hack is Banjo-Kazooie the Bear Waker. Banjo-Kazooie the Bear Waker is another amazing mod made by Mark Kirko, where he puts Banjo-Kazooie in the beginning area of Wind Waker. This one was a blast to play through, a lot of very cool puzzle challenges, and just the cell shading looks so cool in the Banjo-Kazooie aesthetic. This next hack is just unreal, and it's probably my favorite Banjo-Kazooie hack. This is Banjo-Kazooie Gruntilda's Mask. 
It's a Banjo-Kazooie and Majora's Mask crossover, and you mainly go around Clock Town. This mod was honestly such a pleasure to play. Another cool ROM hack by Mark Kirko is Temple in Banjo-Kazooie. Yep, Temple from Super Smash Bros. Made into a Banjo-Kazooie stage where you can go inside the buildings and everything. It is incredibly cool. Mark Kirko is also working on Banjo-Kazooie Jickies of Time, which has two really fun demos. His first demo is Banjo-Kazooie in Kikiri Forest. This is a really fun mini demo where you're just going around Kikiri Forest. And the next one is Banjo-Kazooie in Kakariko Village. This is another really fun hack where you go around Kakariko Village in the graveyard, there's a bunch to collect, you go into the windmill area too. Mark Kirko, incredible ROM hacker, has made so much cool things, and he has so many things upcoming in the future. The next one is Banjo-Kazooie Worlds Collide by Benign, and this one is a full, complete Banjo-Kazooie hack. And this contains a bunch of levels from Banjo-Kazooie either remixed or mashed together. So it's a lot of fun, all the levels are really small, they contain just 10 notes each, but collecting these 10 notes is definitely a pretty big challenge, and it's just made so well. It really looks like it was made by Rare. So I highly, highly recommend Banjo-Kazooie Worlds Collide. The next hack is Banjo-Kazooie The Hidden Layer by X Zero. This hack, the way it's set up, is incredibly cool. Pretty much pretends that Gruntilda's Lair has a hidden secret passage to the back which contains extra levels. This hack matches the original game's aesthetic and theming very well too. This is just a demo at the moment, so there's only one playable level. Hopefully sometime in the future, this hack will be completely done. The next ROM hack is Banjo-Kazooie Returns Demo by Super Zamzi. This demo is incredibly well done. The modeling is great, and I honestly cannot wait for this game to have a full release. And the next one is Banjo Dreamy by Logo. This is a full Banjo Kazooie ROM hack. When I played this ROM hack on stream, when it got to the later levels, I found it so challenging. If you played through Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie and want a challenge, I'd highly recommend playing this hack. It is very well done, and it is a lot of fun to play. Next, we're going to be looking at Mario Kart 64, and the first is a custom track called Mushroom Valley, made by Dead Hamster. He also made the tool Overcart 64. This is the editor used to make custom tracks. This track just came out, but there's going to be a bunch more tracks to come in the future, so definitely be on the lookout. Although we don't have many tracks at the moment, we have hundreds and hundreds of custom characters and carts. Huge shout out to Team Foss Games who has made over 200 carts. These characters include 119 Grand Turismo cars, 79 F Zero machines, 2 Need for Speed cars, 4 Twin B characters, 5 Pokemon characters, 8 Grand Theft Auto San Andreas characters, 16 characters from other series, and 30 original characters. That's a pretty crazy amount. But my favorite hack that he has put out has to be his Grand Theft Auto Mario Kart 64 hack. This one is honestly just really funny and very well done. Another really cool ROM hack is Dragon Ball Z Kart, made by I'm a Vegeta. This hack is very impressive because it doesn't just replace characters, it also replaces a majority of the textures in the game. There are also a bunch more really cool 3D custom characters. The thing about these characters though, is the way that you put them into a ROM isn't through a patch, like every single other one of these ROM hacks. You have to use a tool called Pitstop64, and all these characters have their own custom cart files and voice files. Since this is a lot more complicated than just a simple patch, I'm not going to include these characters on this list. There is also Mario Kart 64 multiplayer hack, and this just gives you a ton of extra options for when you're playing with friends. Probably my favorite option that it adds is that it adds a score system for when you're playing versus multiplayer. Whenever I play Mario Kart 64 with friends, I always pick this ROM hack because of all these great added features. Next game we're going to be looking at is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The first hack we're going to be looking at is The Legend of Zelda Dawn and Dust by Luigi Blood. This is a wonderful ROM hack of Ocarina of Time. Which is pretty faithful to the original, it really looks like this could have easily been made by Nintendo and it was a lot of fun to play. And it definitely is a really good challenge if you beat Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. 
There is also Legend of Zelda Petri's Challenge, which is a fun dungeon challenge. This hack was made by Petri911. Next, let's look at some Diddy Kong Racing hacks. The first hack is Yoshi's Racing Story by 64. This is an awesome hack that lets you play as Green Yoshi or Red Yoshi. It contains the new levels Yoshi Falls, Yoshi Valley, Yoshi Canyon. It also contains Tall Tall Yoshi, which is based on Tall Tall Mountain in Super Mario 64, Yoshi's Donut, Froggy Haze, and Yoshi's Haunt, which is based on Big Boo's Haunt from Super Mario 64. It's really cool being able to play as Yoshi, and all these custom tracks are super cool also. Next one is Rainbow Road. This was originally made by Subdre, and it wasn't console compatible, but 64 came in and fixed it, so now this track is console compatible. And playing Rainbow Road in Diddy Kong Racing is definitely a pretty cool experience. The next one is also by 64, and it's Diddy Kong Racing Goldeneye, and this puts in four Goldeneye levels into Diddy Kong Racing. These levels are Temple, Basement Archives, Surface, and Runaway. These are four really cool levels and overall a great hack. And there's also Diddy Kong Racing Ocarina of Time. This hack lets you play as Link, and it also adds in four tracks. Dodongo's Cavern Boss Room, Lon Lon Ranch, Temple of Time, and Graveyard. This is a very impressive hack, and a nice little detail is for every vehicle Link drives, he wears a different tunic. And the last Diddy Kong Racing hack we're going to be checking out is another hack made by 64 that he made for Halloween, which is Haunter in Diddy Kong Racing. Haunter is just a very cool custom character, and it's a nice touch because you don't see Haunter getting that much representation in anything anymore. The next game we're going to be looking at is Pokemon Snap, and the first hack is Basement from Goldeneye in Pokemon Snap. This is a very cool hack made by Subdrake, where you go around the basement in Goldeneye, catching Pokemon, which is pretty cool. And the next hack is made by 64, it's called Rith Essa. It is a Jet Force Gemini inspired custom Pokemon Snap level. Next up are the Goldeneye hacks. Goldeneye is one of the most hacked Nintendo 64 games out there are. The Goldeneye hacking community is honestly similar to the Super Mario 64 hacking community in size. The difference is, pretty much every single Goldeneye hack is console compatible. I could probably make a whole video of 64 Goldeneye hacks, so I'm going to keep this as brief as possible. If you're looking to download Goldeneye hacks, go to Nintendo64Vault.com. They have hundreds and hundreds of Goldeneye hacks. The first type of Goldeneye hack are the solo levels. These are single custom Goldeneye levels, and there's over 100 of them. So if you played through Goldeneye's campaign and wanted more, well there's a lot more to be found online. And it's not just single levels that have been modded, there are brand new full campaigns for Goldeneye. So you can have another full single player experience with some of these hacks. There is also a whole multiplayer hacking scene too. With tons of multiplayer levels with lots and lots of variety. But overall I think my favorite category on Nintendo 64 Vault is Goldeneye for fun mods. These are mods that aren't meant to be taken as seriously and are more for the casual players. You have fun mods like the Cybertruck mod by Grassloop. This is very cool, it's pretty much just a big meme with Elon Musk and the Cybertruck, and it's just a lot of fun. There's also Goldeneye with Sonic characters made by Crash Override, and this is pretty much just the entire game of Goldeneye, but instead of going around as 007 characters, you go around as Sonic characters. And probably my personal favorite out of every Goldeneye hack is Goldeneye with Mario characters by Stupid Mario Bros. 1 fan. So this makes the campaign different because you're facing Mario characters instead of 007 characters. And this hack also adds a bunch of great multiplayer maps also. My favorite map being Peach's Castle. Honestly, it just feels surreal going around Peach's Castle as Mario characters through the Goldeneye engine. Like, it's just insane to me. The next game we're going to be looking at is Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark is very similar to Goldeneye that they both share the same website where all their mods come from, which is Nintendo 64 Vault. If you've beaten the campaign of Perfect Dark and you're looking for more solo levels, there's a handful of extra solo levels on Nintendo 64 Vault. 
There are also mods that contain multiple levels also. One of the most impressive ones in my opinion is GoldenEye X. GoldenEye X features custom missions and a bunch of subtle changes and easter eggs to make the game feel more like the original GoldenEye. Next up is Yoshi's Story, which only has one hack that's out, but this hack is very impressive. It is 1-1 from Super Mario Bros. and Yoshi Stories. This hack is made by Shigu. It's just the one level, but it is very, very impressive, especially because this is the only hack that's out. Next game is F-Zero X, and F-Zero X has a fair bit of ROM hacks, but none of them quite compare to F-Zero X Climax. This hack replaces all graphics, textures, and circuits in F-Zero X. F-Zero Climax was a game for the Game Boy Advance that was only released in Japan. F-Zero X Climax recreated pretty much the entire game and put it on the Nintendo 64. All 24 tracks from F-Zero Climax were remade in this hack. This hack was made by Philip Bradier, and he put so much work into this game. He said he worked on it for an entire year, putting between 6 to 8 hours in on it a day, so this ROM hack is incredibly impressive. And the last games we're going to be looking at is the Mario Party series. Mario Party 1, 2, and 3 have a bunch of custom boards. There is a very cool website that's also a tool called Party Planner 64. This is a tool that lets you make custom Mario Party maps for either Mario Party 1, Mario Party 2, or Mario Party 3. In the Nintendo 64 days, the maps were just still images instead of full 3D models. So making these maps can be a pretty easy process and it's a really good place to start ROM hacking. The way you download Mario Party boards is a lot different than every other hack on this list. Downloading Mario Party boards doesn't use patches, it uses these map files. You can download these map files on the website Mario Party Legacy. There are well over 100 maps to download, so there's a bunch to check out. After you download the boards off Mario Party Legacy, all you have to do is open up Party Planner 64, open up the ROM of your choosing, then you can import the board and overwrite one of the original maps. This also allows for multiple custom maps on a single ROM. The one downside to Mario Party hacks is that they're not all compatible with EverDrives, and some hacks will definitely freeze on console when it comes to specific events. From what I've played, Mario Party 1 and 2 hacks seem to be pretty consistently good for playing on console. Mario Party 3 hacks, on the other hand, a lot of hacks will crash when you go and visit Boo. And right now, on Mario Party Legacy, there's no section if a hack will work on EverDrive or not, so right now it's kind of trial and error. When you're playing these hacks, I definitely recommend turning on the option save after every turn. In case a crash happens, then you can always just go back to it. Saying that, here's some hacks that I've tested on console and that have run really well. The first hack is Snowflake Lake by Super Zamzi. This is a very impressive hack. It's a remake of the Mario Party 6 board, Snowflake Lake, and it has a, definitely a very interesting path layout. Mario Party 1 never did have a winter themed level, so it's nice that it finally gets one after all these years. Next, let's look at some Mario Party 2 boards. The first board we're going to be looking at is Neon Heights by JK9777. Neon Heights was originally from Mario Party 7, but this is a very cool port of this board to Mario Party 2. And I've always liked this board in Mario Party 7, so it's really cool to be able to play it in Mario Party 2. The next board is Toy Dream by Little Mac. And this board was originally in Mario Party 5, and it's pretty cool that it was ported to Mario Party 2. It seems to match the theming very well of the Nintendo 64 era of games. The next board we're going to be looking at is Dream Haven by Stalfils King. And this is an incredibly cool original map. The reason why this board is so impressive is because Stalfils King modeled this entire map. After he modeled the board, he took a screenshot of it, which is the image that is used for the board. The idea of this map is that you're traveling through Toad's Christmas Eve dreams, which is a pretty crazy concept. This board is a lot of fun, it has such a crazy path layout, and I highly highly recommend this board. Next, let's check out some Mario Party 3 boards. And the first board that's up is F-Zero, made by Party Planner 64 Yep, this board was made by the same person that made the board editor. 
This map might look bland at first, but it's honestly one of my personal favorite maps to play with friends. Right when you start the map, you gotta make a strategic choice. Do you wanna go down to the bank and pay 5 coins? Or do you wanna go up and go through 6 spaces instead of 1? This part of the map is very cool too, because you go down this path and you have a chance of finding coins on the way. There are so many unique strategic things in this map, and I highly recommend playing this one also. Next board is Star Summit by Super Zamzi. This board is based off Star Summit from Paper Mario, and it features an incredible amount of detail. And it looks like it could easily be one of the official Mario Party 3 maps. The attention to detail is amazing, even if you just look at the detail in every little star in the map. This is also one of the few maps that has custom happening spaces. When you reach the top of the map and land on one of these happening spaces, you will visit a star spirit, and each star spirit will give you a different item. Everything about this board is really incredible. In my opinion, it's probably the best looking custom Mario Party board that's out right now. This next board is also by Super Zamzi, and it is Rainbow Boulevard. This map was one of the first custom Mario Party maps to be released, so it doesn't feature any custom happening spaces or anything too crazy, but it does feature a very solid path layout and a very cool theme. This next board is Towering Treetop by Arsola. This is such an impressive map. This map originated in Mario Party 6. But the coolest thing about this map is in Mario Party 6 it has a day-night cycle, and it still has that day-night cycle in this port. It, every three turns the time changes to either day or night, and there are day-specific events and night-specific events. This board has so much to offer when it comes to custom events. There's custom item events and custom coin events, it is very impressive all around. <laughs> And that is over 50 ROM hacks that are console compatible. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. This video honestly took me so long to make, so I appreciate you guys sticking through for the whole thing. If you could leave a like, or maybe even subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Obviously huge shoutouts to all the mod creators that I featured throughout this video. They all did such amazing work. And with that being said, I hope that you guys all have a great day.